<clears throat> we, when do you want to go? Are rolling. Oh, here. perfect. Hey, what's happening? Max from Peak D&D here with my best good buddy. Tony. And uh, this is uh, this part of Talking Fae, part of the Wednesday rotation, where we're doing a talk back on Into the Fae, Luke Hart's campaign module, levels one to five, available on Kickstarter. Check it out, the DM layer. We're doing our talk back covering everything that's happened uh, since the last Talking Fae in our last two gameplay sessions. Uh, we're each gonna get 30 seconds to attempt to recap all of the glory uh, that was our last gameplay session. All right, Max, you want to give it a start? Okay, give me a second, give me a second, let me take a breath. Here we go. Okay, so it started off like we're still down in the cavern and there's the altar and Ben really wanted to go check out the altar, but he only had seven hit points. So it was like, I'm the scout, I'm the thief. So I decided to go through first. And then he was like, no, 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 I have to go. It's the Fae. I've always been obsessed with the Fae. I want to go. And then shit just got crazy, but he got out of it, which was great. And we started going back to town, which was also awesome, but we had a lot of things to do. So uh, we had to check in with people. We had to go see Aretha Franklin and give her back our coasters, but we only gave her back some of the coasters because we still wanted some cash monies. And then we had to go to- Time's up. Time to go. Then I had to go to the, um, what's her face? What's her name? The, Thelma. Uh, the, Thelma, no. Thumpkins. <laughs> we had to go to Thumpkins because I needed to talk to her in order to figure out where um, the guy who sold the ring, or who bought the ring from the guy that we were trying to track down so that we can get a second ring to get to the Fae. And after that, we <laughs> ended up going down to where uh, Tom, Hobbins, Tom Hopkins went down to the Berry Grove, and then we <laughs> dove into this Lake, and we came out the other side. Perfect. We nailed it. Uh, uh, I should have recapped a couple names. Tony, when you giving your recap, I totally forgot that we stopped by the uh, uh, the merchant to try to get the ring back, yeah, and found did. out that it got sold. Yes. To the uh, city watch, um, and that's how you ended up talking to Pumpkins. your best friend. My best friend. Mm -hmm. Are we rolling? Yeah, this has all just been rolling. Oh, I thought time. you hit pause. That's why I haven't been even like remotely in <laughs> character. So, uh, I don't know about you, but I was super surprised at seven hit point Jastian's choice to- I mean, I had two hit points and I definitely wasn't going in there. Gore did not want anything to do with that evil realm until we have some more information or until we had some more of those rings so or, that all of us could go. Or at least like your spell back or hit points or, you know. Lay on hands, I think I got rid of all those too. Man, we were not prepared for that. So um, yeah, I, I can yeah. only imagine, we definitely uh, zeroed in on Jastian that time, but I can only imagine what uh, Gord and Ellensworth, what they were thinking when he, when Gord pulled out that mossy rock from the other side. God love, God love smooth talking playboy, getting himself out of that. I actually kind of was hoping that he was gonna go dark side and yeah. uh, switch allegiances, but uh, that's okay. You know? I mean, that is certainly one of the places that it could have gone sideways because he could have lost all of his hit points. We wouldn't have known. And that would be the new quest is to try to get him back. <laughs> I totally forgot about stopping by uh, and trying to get the ring back and like where that all led to. Um, oh, by the way, the ring that Illensworth and um, Jastian sold behind Gord's back. So he just figured that one out and wanted to get it back that way. And now he knows that there's importance behind it. So we can all get to the Fae. To be fair, it was just like a nondescript gold ring. It wasn't until we found a second nondescript gold ring that anyone assumed there was something special about it. Hey, I mean, it's a gold ring and it's valuable to somebody. Gord wanted to return it to somebody. I, and so did Jastian and Illensworth. <laughs> For money. Except for money. But yeah, that was a curious shop. He was uh he was pretty he yeah. was pretty high strung. I'll be curious about the pudding pops. If those come through, I'm gonna get really my candy so. for life. I really hope so too. We then uh, stopped by the halfing the laughing uh, fork, the shining fork. Dirty one of the forks. The spork. How we went to the forks? spork. I don't oh, know. Lots of sports. Cheating. Cheating oh. fork. Good call. You should know that. Both Good of call. you should know that. Well, whatever. Yeah, of course you did. Ben off camera. I'm not on camera. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, everyone off camera knows all the things. Isn't that all convenient? All the things. Look here. Look here. <laughs> we'll put all the right things there. <laughs> yeah, we returned most of the coasters. Most. Um, I think in game I was certainly satisfied, but I think there were some other ones in there that I didn't know about. So we'll see about that. You went to Thumpkins as well. Yeah, and then we had to go to Thumpkins because you guys could not talk to them whatsoever. So I had to bear that brunt. But she's like my best friend. City Guard Watch. Yeah, I just want the right things to be done. So she's my, she's my bud. 
Well, it's good. So it's good that somebody is is close to the law. Uh, Lord knows Illensworth. Like I haven't got into his backstory, but he does not. He has no love for the police uh, uh, for very good reasons in his mind, which is part of why uh, it was his very bad, no good, rotten, horrible day. Uh, you know, like the one message he he talks to his homie to get the message sent out, and that backfires, and then he's on a mission to go save city watch guards. It's just like the last place Illensworth. Yeah, because I was talking to Thumpkins while you guys were just chilling on the steps, right? What happened to you guys out there? I went to go see my buddy that I used to roll with from my old crew, Steven right. Days, and uh, I gave him a message. He said he was going to deliver it, and he specifically did not follow the advice, <laughs> and it did not happen. And so now uh, the nice thing about that is we have a plot thread up north to go uh, into another patch of wilderness where the trees attack us. Uh, but of course, Gord's plot thread that he found, talking to Thumpkins, led us down south to, um, what was his name? Tom Robbins? Tom, <laughs> Tom, 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 Tom Robbins. Love me some Tom Robbins. Marples. Marples. Marbles. Marbles. Well, Marbles. Good. Something like that. Sure. But, uh, yeah, City Watch Guard that was uh, in investigating the Berry Grove that has the gold ring that Gord so wants for his party so then we can all go to the Fade together. Like, you don't know how much I am hoping that he is a crooked cop. Like, I am <laughs> so, so hoping that he's crooked. Uh, uh, but I guess saving him would be fine too. Might open Gord's eyes a little bit if he turns out to be crooked. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we uh, finally, my two companions, um, we got to the Berry Grove and they have figured out that yes, the trees are alive and they are trying to kill us. Sound of music. They are trying to kill us. And now we are into the Fey, which is completely uh, blowing poor Illensworth's mind. Um, but interestingly enough, we didn't need rings to get there this time. We didn't, which uh, yeah, uh, Gord's mind is certainly gonna be blown at that point and maybe his, you know, is uh, plot threads might change from being here and getting here without having those rings because that's why we completely went on this quest is to get said ring. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing better than talking about people who can't defend themselves when they're not here. What do you think Jastian's dad is implicit Ooh. in all of this stuff? I did forget about Jastian's dad. Yeah, and I don't man. even know really how much Gordon Illensworth know about that interaction into the Fae, obviously. Oh, valid point. You know what I mean? He didn't really let on to much. So we know that That's he has true. to see his dad, but yeah. we're not sure really the reason. Um, and again, uh, Gord's plan pressing on, he's the one marching forth on the plans that we do get and kind of directing which ones are more important. So I'm sure Justin is just following that ilk to not get to his dad. Yeah, well, he doesn't seem very keen on no. talking to Pops. So uh, that's one thing that to be like, I, I'm excuse to be a fly on the wall for that or <laughs> to hopefully be a character there for that. Uh, I am really curious about how that's all gonna and, shake out. And of the two of us, which character is more likely to be there on that fly on the wall? You. I mean, I- Gord's not gonna come anywhere near his dad. Try. I don't know why. You're probably like the best. Oh, thing I want to. Could. Yeah. But I'm sure You're Jastian's like, gonna swear up and down, not getting me there. The like golden boy, like, hey, Dad, look at my cool best friend. Like, he's such a good influence. You divine sense, my father. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that breaking some sort of? Okay, whatever. <laughs> so I'm definitely curious about that. Curious what we're gonna find into the thing. Tom Marbles. Tom Markle. Angela yes. Merkel. Yes. What? I wrote it down. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, um, man. But then after that, we're, <laughs> we're gonna have to go to Thumpkins, whether it goes south or north for the party. Um, Gord's gonna wanna report back as, as per usual. Timothy Maples. It wasn't even Tom. He got the first letter right. That's he did. pretty good. Hey, we've got the initials right. What are you most excited about for this next gameplay session? I'm super excited about the, uh, we did build the set right afterwards and it looks oh. really cool. How, how blown Gord's mind is going to be being in a completely different realm. He was in a different city and his mind was blown, let alone a different realm. So, uh, but again, he's trudging on and he has a point to get to and that's what he's probably going to do. Fair enough. I, from like a meta gameplay standpoint, I question our choice to not take a long rest. Like oh, we absolutely. still have not slept. Like we are definitely not, uh, we are uh, weakened at this point. And so like to be starting in some sort of gnarly dungeon on a different plane, uh, not at full strength, not typically the way I like to roll, but uh, 
here we are. Um, who knows? Light that campfire and take a rest. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. You know, the trees try to kill us, so I'm sure it'll be great to just sleep there for eight it'll hours. It'll be great. I do remember we did take a short rest. I think Gord's uh, all at least HP'd up. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But yeah, spell slots are down and uh, resources are down, so <laughs> we're going to see how this goes. Be fine. Well, thanks for tuning in for uh, Talking Fae with Max and Tony. Uh, we look forward to seeing you this Saturday for the next chapter of this crazy adventure that we're on. Hell yes. Be sure to uh, like the video, subscribe, do all the YouTube things, and uh, yeah, see you next time. At the top the of the peak. See you next time. At the top of the peak. <laughs>